Now this is the most insane Defender probably in the history of the new Defender. And the guy who built it not only built the most insane Defender, but did the most insane thing in the most insane Defender, which is the Pinnacle Trail, the Rubicon Trail. Steve! Hey, how are you? Good you're, to see you again. You're back, dude. Yeah, and we're back. You just keep going bigger. Yeah, we do. Every time we I do. see Socorro you. Socorro and the crew in the shop, they, uh, they outdid themselves this time. So this is Kong. Uh, it's a V8 110 on a 5-inch lift from uh, J. Austin Fabrication. And then we're running 37s. And uh, Lucky 8 sliders, uh, Voyager Rack. Uh, we have Lucky 8 rear control arm sliders, which we were on most of the Rubicon Trail. <laughs> and it did great. I mean, it did great. Absolutely crazy. So what was kind of the genesis of this build? Why, uh, why did you build this one out? Uh, well, we named it Kong. Obviously, it's black and it's appropriate. We wrapped it in the satin self-healing uh, uh, clear mask. Uh, but we wanted it to kind of be the pinnacle so far. Uh, this is a successor to um, Big Berry, uh, which was our trophy truck last year. Uh, but more power, more power is always better. And uh, drew a huge crowd on the Rubicon. So let's talk about the Rubicon Trail. So who did you run it with? What was the group? Yeah, so it's the NorCal Land Rover Club. Uh, super great group. The group you go with on the Rubicon makes the trip and we had a blast and we were invited. Uh, so sh huge shout out to uh, Greg and Don and Eric for, uh, for letting us come out. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just a rowdy group. They're die hard, solid axle, old school Rover guys and they're they're a blast. We had a fun. Were there any other new defenders out on the trail with you guys? There was not. There was not. It was just us. Um, because we're purpose built, um, you know, they really wanted to see how does it do. It is the first defender that's made the trip and run the run the Rubicon. So uh, it is the first and only. Of the new defenders. Of the new defender. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about some of the things you learned from the trip. So, yeah. Five inch lift to fit 37s. Can you explain again how you lift a new Defender? Because it's not body on frame. How do you get that lift? Correct. So it's a subframe lift. Uh, so it's basically um, uh, built and manufactured to sit on top of the front and the rear subframe, uh, which you could also call a body lift, kind of one and the same hmm. thing, but it gives you additional ground clearance. Uh, when you do that, and then that allows us to get the bigger tire under there. And, and uh, this one, we didn't do a whole lot of uh, trimming other than some plastic. We did relocate the front cooler. Uh, there's two front coolers for the transmission uh, for towing capacity. We went down to one cooler underneath the engine, and uh, um, that allowed us to improve our approach angle and get, get up on the rocks with the tires. So when you're doing that subframe lift, or, or maybe like another way you could look at it is like you're dropping the subframe underneath the body. Right. Um, do you have to like reposition the transfer case? And... No, okay. no, all that stays completely stock. So there's no additional stress other than tire size on the, on the factory geometry. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you fit. So it rides completely stock. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Do you have like lift rods on the, on the air suspension? No lift rods on this one. Um, so you can do a, a one, a one and a half or two inch lift rods. Um, that kind of tricks the airbag as to where neutral is, yeah. standard ride height. But you do uh, sacrifice some ride quality and some droop or, you know, uh, wheel travel. Yeah, like that down travel gets yep. pretty minimal. So, okay, let, let's, let's start at the front. So you, you, you did the Rubicon. Yeah. Obviously the first obstacle is called the Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. It's pretty legendary. Did you get hung up anywhere? Did you get hung up? Uh, on we gate? drove right through it, uh, <laughs> right up to the granite slab, kind of, uh, kind of a non-event. Uh, uh, tire size had a big part to do with that, yeah. for sure. Wow. And um, I see you, you probably did a little bit of trimming here, right? Yeah, so this is where the coolers usually are, and we relocated one underneath the engine above the subframe, and then we removed the second one. Uh, no cooling issues whatsoever. I do think it will impact tow capacity, and I don't have, we don't know what that has, you know, yeah. what effect that's had at this point. Now, one thing I noticed with our Defender, and I have seen this in other Defenders too, is like some of the front end armor is a little dinky. Yeah. Has this been upgraded? So this is actually the factory piece that Socorro and the guys re reattached, and then we used the factory front skid plate, but then we custom built some 3 16 inch steel full skids underneath the entire uh, truck. Wow. 
So when you're off-road in this, um, do you still have the full ride control with the yes. suspension? So we ran most of the trail in neutral height, standard ride height, mm -hmm. and then we would raise it up uh, if we needed to get up onto a rock, up onto an obstacle, or clear something. And then we would drop it back to standard ride height. And then, you know, there's some of those really tippy parts that are a little scary. Yeah. We may have dropped it on those just to lower the center of gravity as well. All right. So when I did it in, in, um, in Wranglers and even on 35s, I spent like 12 hours a day on the skid plates, it felt like. Did you yeah. spend a lot of time on control arms and getting caught up there? So rear, the rear control arms, Lucky 8s, uh, made some skids for us. Uh, we we hit those quite a bit. Okay, that was an integral part of our journey. But but like you didn't bend anything. No, nope, didn't off the trail. bend. We didn't break. Never broke the whole trip. Now what about lockers? So these are kind of these are kind of a little different than like what you'd find on a Wrangler. We have selectable lockers. How do they work on this? So on this, they're selectable center locker, rear locker, and then the front is a limited slip. Uh, and then you have computer controlled uh, modes similar to Bronco, uh, where you can pick mud ruts, rock crawl, you know, different uh, dynamic mode for the street. Uh, what we found for this trail is we turned everything off, uh, including traction control, because the vehicle would kind of supersede if you're trying to climb something really steep. It thought you were in a skid, and so it would cut power to the engine. So we turned all that off, and then it woke the truck up. You could heat up the tires, which helps you get up the big obstacles. Now, when you say turn that all off, is that like a button, or did you start pulling fuses? Uh, no, so we, we turned traction control off. There's a button. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in configurable terrain response, we went more wheel spin, more throttle response. Oh, interesting. So rather than selecting one of the pre-programmed programs, we... we turned it all off. And in that mode, can you still like select the lockers on and off? Yes. Interesting. Absolutely. Right on the, right on the screen. So, um, uh, we left them locked the whole time. Locked the whole time. Yeah. Now, a lot of times when people hear Rubicon, they think they need that front locker. Was there ever a point where like you wish you had a front locker? Uh, so we're working, uh, um, Tim Scully is going to see if we can't figure out how to get an ARB locker in a front diff. Hmm. Um, that's kind of a winter project for us with him. Um, I mean, we, we ran everything without it, so uh, we didn't need it, but yeah. I'd like to have it for kind of the big step ups. That's kind of where you really need that. Right. And usually you turn it off anyway. Uh, so it'd be nice to have it, and we'd like to get it in there, but we, we haven't got there yet. Now, one thing you told me, and I, I didn't know this, um, the locker on, on these Defenders is a little interesting, right? It's like a clutch system but it's crazy pressure or something right yeah it's it's more like a viscous coupling so it, it's friction rather than pins um so it can slightly not be engaged too engaged and I, I, the engineers could tell you but nanoseconds probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah right fair enough um now let's talk about the powertrain a little bit so you spend a lot of time with every defender four cylinders the inline yeah. six to yeah. v8 um was the v8 the right choice for this rig uh, the, the six is great. This is more greater, -er -er. <laughs> more better, -er. uh, you know, more power is always better. So I, I love V8. So it would be my choice. And we'll have to get a sound clip, sound clip after this. Yeah. Now, what did the old school like Land Rover folks think when you rolled up in this insane Defender? Well, so we have some classic solid axle stuff too, so I can appreciate the the pause and the uh, concern, uh, you know, of independent suspension coming to the trail. Um, there was certainly some of that, and uh, you know, we ran the whole trail. We have a little scuff on the yeah, look at that, very minor there, and a little one up on the front. That's it. Uh, never broke, um, and we ran all the same obstacles everybody else did. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of the answer is it does it. But you had ventilated uh, seats and Apple CarPlay and refrigerated glove box. <laughs> I did point that out on the trail on the radio regularly. <laughs> Freaking awesome! Now, I I just love this. I think this is really cool. Um, what are some of like the pros of doing a build like this to a new Defender, and then what are some of like the limitations? Uh, limitations, you raise your center of gravity, you do impact your tow capacity, so it's 8,200 pounds prior to what we did, 
and your uh, approach departure angle and side hill are 45 degrees stock. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I can tell you at 36 degrees, your seat of pants does not feel so good. <laughs> uh, so I can imagine doing 45 degrees anyway, but I'm sure that we've impacted that. Okay, fair enough. And then um, what are some of like the great things about the new Defender platform? What have you discovered? You know, it's super capable. We proved that, you know, we ran the Rubicon with those guys. Um, it's an awesome overlander. Uh, the Voyager rack holds a uh, thousand pounds, so you can get a rooftop tent up there if you want. Um, you can actually sleep in the back if you like. The 130 is the longer version coming out, so that'll give you even more room. I think you'd agree with me. It's super easy to clean inside. Yeah, it's great. Uh, the, probably my favorite part. Um, you know, tow capacity is 8,200 pounds stock. Um, three engine choices, a two and a, a six, or I mean, a, a four, a six, and an eight. Um, what about like, and this is the most interesting thing about the Defender, which I was totally proven wrong about, like um, part availability from the aftermarket. Is it pretty big? How does it compare to like the Wrangler world or the Bronco world? Uh, significantly smaller, okay. for sure. So Lucky Aid is kind of one of the forefront guys uh, or companies out there. Um, you know, shout out to Wheel Pros helping us out with wheels and tires. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're making products. Uh, Ralph Sarek back, uh, back in the east is, is doing a lot of very custom stuff. Uh, Voyager's looking into a lot of stuff for these as well. And then... Um, uh, Wheel Poros just acquired uh, four-wheel parts and Terraflex, and I think they have some some pretty big plans there, but I can't speak for them. So, it, but it's it's developing. It's not like for sure you're doing all of this custom. If there's demand, you know, build it, they will come, and that's kind of the intent here is to show it's super capable platform, push it to the limits, um, increase awareness. Most people are never going to do what we just did. <laughs> I mean, you've done it. It's it's beautifully pretty, torturous pretty pretty brutal yeah so uh you know they're they're gonna get to a level six trail probably which you can do in a defender right off the floor that's cool well steve thanks for coming out yeah dude. you bet i really appreciate that yeah, thank I, you i'm amazed it did it i certainly was one of the ones that was in the doubt camp um do you think this is the only one on 37s or have there been others well we have one other one uh big berries oh, so on 37s <laughs> uh i don't know of any other but there may be i, now, I i'm not Sure. Like stuff like this looks alarming. Did you start running into clearance issues at all? No, we never rubbed there. We had a little bit of rub uh, on the front when we were articulated up uh, into the uh, firewall there. Oh, gotcha. At the pinch weld. And honestly, we that's something we can trim back, um, you know, and, and improve the way we have it right now. Sweet. Well, dude. And it, by the way, if you were looking for a Land Rover, Land Rover of Denver is. It's the go-to guys when it comes to anything Land Rover. They, 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 they run the gamut from on-road to off-road, so check them out. All right, dude, thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. You bet. This is Thanks. Fun.